Now friends, let's discuss the solution of section C. Question numbers 13 to 22 carry 3 marks each. Now let's discuss the question number 13. This question is from chapter real numbers. And the question says, prove that root 2 is an irrational number. Friends, we'll solve this question using contradiction method. First of all, we'll assume root 2 be rational. Then there exist positive integers a and b such that root 2 can be written as a upon b where a and b are co-prime numbers provided b is not equal to 0. That means we are assuming root 2 is a rational number. So that's why we are representing this rational number in form of a upon b. a and b are co-prime numbers. That means the HCF of a and b must be 1. Clear? Now on squaring both sides of this equation will obtain clear and after further simplification we are getting this relation 2b square is equal to a square and from this relation you can conclude 2 divides a square. Friends in this chapter you have studied a very important concept in fundamental theorem of arithmetic if 2 divides a square then 2 will also divide a that means you can say a is an even number. So a is an even number so that's why we are considering a is equal to 2c where c is some integer and when we further simplify this step on squaring both sides of this equation we are obtaining this relation b square is equal to 2c square and from this relation you can conclude 2 divides b square. Again using the concept based on fundamental theorem of arithmetic if 2 divides b square then 2 will definitely divide b. That means you can say b is also an even number. From equation number 1 and 2, we are obtaining a very important conclusion that is a and b both are even numbers. That means their HCF must be the multiple of 2. Clear? And if their HCF is multiple of 2, that means they are not co-prime numbers. So definitely in the next step, you can conclude from equation number 1 and 2, we are getting our assumption was wrong. That means we can conclude root 2 is an irrational number. So from this important conclusions, we are obtaining root 2 is an irrational number. So I hope you understood the solution of this question. If you have written the solution in this manner, then you can definitely score 3 out of 3. Now let's discuss the marking scheme of this question. So start with the beginning. So when you assume root 2 is a rational number, this important step will give you half mark for this question. Clear? And after further simplification here we are getting 1 mark for this step and 1 mark for this step and rest half mark for the final conclusion when you conclude our assumption was wrong. So this is the marking scheme of this question. I hope you understood this question. Now let's proceed to the next one. Question number 14. This question is from chapter polynomials and the question says find the value of k such that the given polynomial has sum of its zeros equal to half of their product. This question is based on the concept of relation between zeros and coefficient of any given quadratic polynomial. So first of all we are assuming the zeros of this given quadratic polynomial be alpha and beta. Now let's write the relation between zeros and coefficient for the given polynomial. So first of all alpha plus beta that means sum of zeros equal to minus b upon a where b is the coefficient of x and a is the leading coefficient that means the coefficient of x square and for this given quadratic polynomial the value of a is 1 product of zeros it will be equal to c upon a that means constant term divided by the leading coefficient here the constant term is 2 multiplied by 2k minus 1 and the leading coefficient is again 1. So this is the relation between zeros and coefficient for the given quadratic polynomial. Now let's move on to the given information sum of its zeros equal to half of their product. So when you represent this information mathematically you will get this important relation that means alpha plus beta is equal to 1 by 2 times the product of the zeros of this given quadratic polynomial 
and when you put the values of alpha plus beta and alpha into beta from this step you will obtain a very important relation and with the help of this relation you can easily obtain the value of k which is equal to 7 and this is the final answer for this question now let's discuss the marking scheme of this question start from the beginning so when you find when you consider the zeros of this quadratic polynomial this step will give you half mark for this question and the relation between zeros and coefficient will give you one mark because this is very important step and further when you represent the given information mathematically this is again a very important step this will again give you one mark for this question and rest half mark is based on the calculation part that means when you obtain the value of k equal to 7 this step will give you rest half mark for this question and this is the marking scheme of this question so i hope you understood the solution as well as the marking scheme now let's proceed to the next one question number 15 in this question you have choice that means you can solve either this part or its optional part this question says a father's age is three times the sum of the ages of his two children after five years his age will be two times the sum of their ages find the present age of the father that means this question is from chapter pair of linear equations in two variables so first of all we'll assume the age of father be x years and the sum of ages of two children be y years and this is the step of assumption thereafter will represent two given informations in form of linear equations in two variables so start with the very first information the age of father is three times the sum of ages of two children so when you represent this statement mathematically you will obtain this linear equation in two variable that means x is equal to 3y that can be written as x minus 3y is equal to 0 and the second information after five years his age will be two times the sum of their ages after five years the age of father will be x plus five years and after five years the sum of ages of two children will be y plus five plus five that means y plus ten years and when you represent the second information mathematically you will obtain another linear equation in two variable that is x plus 5 is equal to 2 times y plus 10 and when you further simplify you'll get this linear equation in two variable now friends here we have a pair of linear equations in two variable now you can solve these two equations using any of the methods so here we are going to solve these two equations by elimination method and after simplification we are getting the value of y 15 and when you put the value of y in equation number 1 you will obtain the value of x which is equal to 45 that is the required answer for this question that means the age of father is 45 year and this is the complete solution of this question now let's discuss the marking scheme so when you assume the ages of father and the sum of the ages of two children this step will give you half mark for this question and when you obtain this first relation this step will give you another half mark and when you obtain the second relation when you represent the second information mathematically this step will give you another half mark and after solving these two equations using elimination method will give you one mark for this question this is very important step and rest half mark is based on final answer that means the age of father which is equal to 45 years and this is the complete solution and the marking scheme of this question now let's discuss the optional part of this question this question is again from the same topic pair of linear equations in two variables word problem so this question says a fraction becomes 1 upon 3 when 2 is subtracted from the numerator and it becomes 1 upon 2 when 1 is subtracted from the denominator find the fraction so first of all we'll assume the fraction be x upon y that means numerator be x and denominator be y so this is the step of assumption where y is not equal to 0 clear so after 
further simplification we are going to represent these two informations in form of linear equation in two variables so start with the very first information here it is given that a fraction becomes 1 upon 3 when 2 is subtracted from the numerator that means x minus 2 divided by y is equal to 1 upon 3 this is very important step and when you represent this information mathematically you will obtain this relation that means 3x minus y is equal to 6 this is linear equation in two variable now let us proceed to the second information it becomes 1 upon 2 when 1 is subtracted from the denominator that means we can represent this statement mathematically in this way x upon y minus 1 we are subtracting 1 from the denominator and this fraction will become 1 upon 2 and when we simplify this equation we are getting a linear equation 2x minus y is equal to minus 1 so here we have a pair of linear equations in two variable you can solve this equation using any of the method here we are using elimination method and when you solve these two equations you will get the value of x equal to 7 and when you put the value of x in equation number 1 we get y is equal to 15 so here we have the value of x and y so clearly we can conclude the required fraction will be x upon y that is 7 upon 15 and this is the answer for this question now let us discuss the marking scheme for this question so start from the beginning when you consider numerator and denominator so this step will give you half mark clear and when you obtain first equation that means when you represent the first information mathematically this step will give you half mark and this second equation will give you another half mark and when you solve these two equations using elimination method or any of the methods this step will give you one mark this is very important step and the final half mark is based on the answer for this question that means the required fraction 7 upon 15 and this is the solution and the marking scheme of this question now let us discuss next question